Hey everybody, my name is Chris and back with another fragrance video. Welcome to Casual Fragrances. On my channel, we talk about fragrances, fragrance news, and I do free fragrance giveaways once a month to lower subscribers on my channel. If this sounds cool, you're not subscribed to my channel, no worries. Anytime this video, if you enjoy this type of content and you like free giveaways, please start clicking that subscribe button to show your support. Hit the like button, leave a comment down below. Before we start, ladies and gentlemen, what's your center of the day? Please leave a comment down below. This video is not sponsored by anybody at all. I like this company a lot. I went to the event they had for them. And they were really nice people. Uh, my girlfriend Kelly was, came along too. I met another uh, fan from my channel, which is very awesome. She's a very kind lady. I took a picture Deborah. with her. Yes, her name was Deborah. Shout out to Deborah. Really nice, and she enjoys my videos and stuff. So thank you. I don't really meet a lot of my fans. When I go to events. Sometimes they live kind of far. It meant a lot to me. Very special. That I'm actually doing something good for people, and it's awesome to meet people that enjoy my channel. So if I ever do meet you, I'll say hi to you, get an autograph, take a picture, whatever. So. I just enjoy meeting people I like Frey as much as I do. So we're going to start with the company here. It's called Mas Milano. This is the presentation of the Discovery set they sent me, which is pretty nice. Pretty cool Gorgeous. set. Gorgeous set. Um, I just told them I really like their company. A nice description of all the fragrances of in each there fragrances. as well. But I took it out. I she took it out. So instead of trying, I don't want to fall on the floor. So... All these fragrances here do have a story behind them, which is very awesome. This is a niche fragrance brand, and later on in the video, they're going to explain most of the fragrances. This is going to be a long video, over 30-something minutes, but he's going to explain the brand and how it came about. So if you want to enjoy this video, um, get some popcorn and soda, sit back and relax. <laughs> it's going to be a long video, but at least you get a chance to see how the event was, even though know, you couldn't go to it, ladies and gentlemen. So before we start, she's going to show you her three that... She really enjoys, and I'm going to tell you about my three, which you probably seen in the last video, so let her go. <laughs> yeah, so uh, it was Alessandro yes. was, who was there, right? Yes, yes. Mm -hmm. So Alessandro talked really passionately about the uh, different fragrances and the stories behind them. It was really, really cool. Yes. Um, my favorites are Times Square, Romanza, and Love Kills, which yes. is not out yet, but is coming in late July, yes. mid to late July, I believe, mm -hmm. and we got a sample at the fragrance event, yep. so that was really cool, and he also talked about the next chapter that's coming, the dream Which looks chapter. amazing. Yes. <laughs> well, for her more than me. She knew more about that background. Sounds, sounds really cool. There's going to be like an Alice in Wonderland inspiration, and like another inspiration about like kind of like biting into like a fruit and like it's an apple but tastes like a peach like that kind of like mind trickery that you get in dreams so it just seems like really neat inspiration so I'm really excited about the fourth act of this line should be amazing the new fragrance she's talking about is called love kills we got a sample there at the uh, perfumology event. Shout out to Nier from Perfumology for hosting the event. Very nice guy, awesome guy. Nier, anytime you need me to support your perfumology store, just give me a call or just email me directly and I'll be there anytime of weekend to support you guys and your company. But anyway, ladies and gentlemen, I had a great time. It was fun there. I'm going to go over my three. My favorites are, which you probably seen in the last video. Um, the other one I do like, my girlfriend was talking about here, is Times Square. I have it right about here. Oh, right here. Sorry about that. I have Times Square. Which is a real nice fragrance, and I'm still I'm still stuck on still trying Russian tea. And that was really interesting. Really nice, and my favorite is Manza. Now I'm gonna not gonna get too graphic here, but I do want to explain why I enjoy this one a lot. I did not know the story behind it when I went to Perfumology two weeks ago. I test this fragrance brand out. I tested this one out here, and I actually fell in love with this one. This fragrance is just. A fragrance that I didn't know the story behind it at first. So when I sprayed, I'm like, I could see myself being into it with my girlfriend with this fragrance here. It's a very special, intimate fragrance for myself. You know, I'm already, I already have a boost of confidence anyway, you know, being with my girlfriend. I enjoyed that. But this just gave me a 200 meters up scale. This is this amazing fragrance. And I'm very passionate about this fragrance myself. And I enjoy it when I'm with my girlfriend. We have our alone time. That's why I love this fragrance. It's my number one fragrance for it. that type of... You know what I'm talking about, ladies and gentlemen. The night, time, fun time. <laughs> so, so anyway, that's just my favorite fragrance. fragrance. I'm going to buy a bottle soon. Um, and I'll do a full review on it because I don't want to go over everything. But I'll just go over a note breakdown. A note breakdown we have. We have Archmanthus. We have Orange Blossom. We have Angelica. We have Narcissist. We have Violet Leaf. We have Jasmine. And we have... Woods, vetiver, cedar wood, patchouli, amber, 
Accord. So uh, definitely I will do a full review on this fragrance and down there. the road down the road so you guys can get a full update. I don't have a bottle yet, but definitely check this fragrance brand. They have a lot of great fragrances and they all tell a story. Just like with the one here, it tells a story about romance and stuff like that. So it's very awesome. Um, you can buy a discovery set like this, minus the new one that came out. It's not the set yet. Um, I'll leave a link down below to their website where you can buy their fragrances or a sample pack and just try them out. And you get a cool little strip so you can test the fragrances out on. So it's pretty nice. Um, is there anything else you'd like to tell about the company before we show the video or anything? Anything else you'd like to add to it? Um, oh, they are just, they're super into like the noses behind the fragrance. He talks a lot about the creators behind it. He's really into having women creators in a very male dominated field. I really appreciated that. And he's really into getting young creators in, like demanding a lot from them so that you can see the, like the future, like noses in the fragrance community coming up through his company, like getting the best young people in and just making like the best fragrances. And you can see that in what they make, like literally like every single fragrance is amazing. It's like, what do I like a little bit less? It's really There's like every single one is amazing, like, yeah. but it's like, okay, these are my favorites. But really like I could see owning every single bottle, really. Like maybe like a couple you're like, okay, maybe I don't want a full bottle because they are expensive. They are. But They're around a hundred something is, dollar range. So yeah, one hundred twenty. Yeah, one hundred twenty to about one hundred fifty bucks. I'll leave the website down below because each bottle is a different price, but it's in that one fifty, one hundred, one hundred twenty five dollar range for a thirty five mil bottle. But if you can find a store where you can test these out, definitely. Like or or getting this discovery set is really I mean, nice. You really, can try them all out. Gorgeous. The whole line. Like they even like give you like test strips that are gorgeous. Awesome. Um, and I just. I love the presentation. I love their passion. And you're going to see that when you listen to this video. And his accent's amazing. I just love to listen to him talk. He's a really nice guy. He talked about his fragrances. It so wasn't, down to earth. It was like we went there. It wasn't like he was trying to sell you to buy a fragrance. He was telling he you about the fragrance brand and passion. everything. And people did buy fragrances. But it wasn't like a sales pitch. Like, oh, you have to buy something or I'm not going to talk. He talked regardless to us afterwards about fragrances and his passion. And that's what you want as a company. I love that company in they general. They speak for themselves. Yes. When you smell these fragrances, like, oh, man, this fragrance hit the spot. I can picture it. And each one tells a story which he'd been through kind of in his life or people he knows of, of some of the stories about. So which they all make sense. But ladies and gentlemen, I hope you enjoyed this long video. I know it's long, but I hope you enjoy it and I hope you learn something from it. And please consider clicking that subscribe button anytime there's video. Thank you, Mas Milano, for having me come to the event, test out fragrances. And I'd like to thank Perfumology for hosting this event. Hope you guys enjoyed the video. Enjoy. So she left the company, she opened up a gazebo outside her home in the countryside around Brussels. That's their laboratory now. When the weather is nice, their laboratory is good. When the weather is bad, their laboratory is this possible. And she called their company Is Inspiration B. Free Inspiration. We want to have free inspiration. When we told her about this one and this one, she told me both are the free inspiration, the freedom of, of life that I can represent through practice. And so we want to do both. The second is the opposite. opposite, is the sunset, it's not outside, it's inside, it's in an old country mansion in the Toscan countryside. You know those old houses, we still have great houses in, uh, in Europe, um, and the walls after three centuries are mossy. When you smell the walls, you get this feeling of old and uh, old van. So we imagine this uh, living room with a fireplace uh, and the leather of the sofa and the tobacco of the cigar, some rum, uh, and, and this mossiness that is giving some kind of uh, 
double our status to the place, not noble thing. And I also love, for instance, when I go into old libraries uh, to browse books, but to smell them before starting browsing, and ask them, can you make this effect? Yes, of course. It's so easy. And, and once again, if you are technical, it's very easy to explain how to do. She told us, smell this, smell this, smell this, and now smell the three of them together. And in front of me, there was the library with the books, uh, with, the, you know, that dewy, that mossiness that you have in the paper. It's the combination of those notes. And that's why, of course, uh, noses are studying chemistry first uh, before taking uh, the perfumery school in Paris because that tells exactly how to convey a certain feeling. And first I want you to smell once again and then I'll tell you what, what's inside. This is called Monte Cristo for obvious reasons. You might know that Monte Cristo is the count, is the cigar, but it's also an island in the Toscan archipelago with an old fort abandoned. So you have a sort of a rock, a sort of, you know, a Game of Thrones-like setting. Thank you. Thank you. Also, this crazy feeling of old mossy walls giving a positive, uh, to me, relaxing, uh, good feeling, feeling. How she did the old mossy walls? Uh, with three raw materials. One is umbretta seeds. They are seeds, they are vegetable, but they are very stinky. So, used in a certain way, can give this animal feeling. The second one is a special wood uh, coming from Latin America, it's called Cabre Uva. I didn't know that oil was extracted from Cabre Uva. I only knew about Cabre Uva using it as a flooring wood. And the third one is Hiracho, or Hirax. It's a Hirax, sorry. It's a small robin living in the desert of Ethiopia. And living always, and, and of course being and going always in the same area. And after centuries and centuries and centuries, this uh, residual gets mineralized. Which is good, first of all, because it's a natural animal not coming with no animal cruelty, because it's collected as stones in the desert. And this is very important to us. I mean, it's very important for the perfumery industry in general. Second, because after centuries, uh, all you get from the desert uh, is mineralized. So technically speaking, Hyrax is 50% from organic nature and 50% from mineral nature. When you go in the cellar of a very old house and you scrape the walls and you get some moss, technically speaking, you have 50% minerals and 50% mosses that are developing and they are organic. So we have the same kind of technical base to create the effect. The earthy notes, I wouldn't have been able to guess and write the type of wood, but there is a certain, there's a natural earthiness that the contrast but it blends with the rum and tobacco and the other one. It's very nice to use it. It's very nice to use it. It's very nice to use it. After a little bit. And it's still on the wall, of course. A third experience, we moved to Russia. Me and Ricardo had a business trip to Russia. Uh, we had some events in the stores uh, in Moscow. Then we have the weekend in St. Petersburg, which, I don't know if you ever visited Russia, is uh, um, the most European of the Russian cities because it was built mainly by Italian architects uh, with all the stuccos of the buildings. And then, of course, at the beginning of the 20th century, 
Art Nouveau arrived. And in the biggest uh, uh, promenade, the Nyevsky Prospect, uh, they made some nice, uh, very nice uh, Art Nouveau buildings. One was the headquarters of the singer, the uh, Sewing Machines Company. Um, so this company is at the time had the most money, so the best buildings were typically owned by brick and mortar companies before the advent of finance, of course. Um, after they sold the building, it became a um, food store, and at the first floor there is a cafe. So you go there, you browse through the books, you go to the cafe, you sit a little bit, you rest, uh, and you order. And what we ordered in the menu was the Russian tea ritual. It sounded awesome. We didn't know what it was, but say, come on, we did this. Um, and so a few ladies with their apron and bonnet started preparing a huge table with some of our and a lot of dishes with their small uh, pancakes called lini and a lot of gems, so very liquid gems. And then they brought finally the teapot without tea in it. They first put some fresh mint leaves in the teapot for some reason related to their heritage and they pour hot water so the effect is immediate burst of mint and then they started brewing the tea but it was the darkest believe me darkest tea that was ever brewed to me in my life dark scorching undrinkable <laughs> like, like like a ledger good soap Water, uh, with, 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 with birch tar, with everything you can imagine, but the, the smell. And the story goes that probably families uh, in, uh, in the cold Siberian winter didn't have many pastime, but brewing some tea and spending time together storytelling one another. If the tea was light, it would drink in one go, and it would spoil the, the whole you know, budget of the night. But if the brew was very intense, uh, you would put a little bit in your in your cup and add water, and with one teapot you can do like uh, 20 servings. And so that that's why they did it very intense. Uh, apparently, there was also another reason: the best tea cargoes coming from China would go through sea to the Queen of England, who had the power to pay. There was a, no air shipment at the time. Sea transportation was the expensive one. What was the cheapest one? Coming back through the sea route. Caravan Serai, stopping over, resting, moving again. In the Arch Siberian winter, the tea was spoiled. They even to protect it from the very humid winter, they even put the tea closer to the bonfire. Of course, when we reached Russia, it was the worst possible quality, smoked, uh, not because they wanted to, but because it was a meat. Um, and this smoked the tea mixed with meat was the experience. Plus, we asked some sugar, and they said, no, no sugar, please. You spoil the taste. You can put a little bit of raspberry jam in it, like we do. Yeah. Apparently, it's quite typical. Probably they have a lot of raspberries, uh, a, lot, a lot of raspberry bushes in, in Siberia. And uh, uh, I, I was visiting in my first honeymoon in Siberia myself. I stopped in an academic city, academic or not, close to North Siberia. And I asked for some uh, tea in the cafeteria of the university. They charged me for the sugar. So without sugar, it was five cents, five rubles. And with sugar, it was six rubles. So, there could have a time, that's my guess, in which sugar was, uh, you know, an expensive thing. Like in Italy, it was salt. You know how we call salary? Oh, you, you say salary, right? Yes. You know why salary? Salary is coming from salt. Salt was so expensive in the Roman Empire that people would not get the money for working. They would get a bunch of salt. That was your salary. Take it or leave it. So, I mean, once upon a time, salt was expensive in Italy, maybe sugar was uh, unbearably expensive in Russia. 
But we found out that the mix was unique and especially unprecedented in perfumery. There are a few tea fragrances, but they are very light, and so we wanted to have uh, this kind of effect. So you immediately have the freshness of the mint. Thank you. Thank you. I like that one. I do like it. It does have like a note of that harshness that he was talking about. It has that uh, raspberry, black pepper, and has mint tea. It's trying to pick up on his name. The name of this nose is Julien Raskinet. We selected it because it created a beautiful bonfire for Naomi Gutzil, of what it says. A very, very, you know, realistic bonfire with, you know, the guitar, and the marshmallows. <laughs> you say, we, you are, you are great with these smoky notes. Can you create a tea fragrance for us? We come and visit you. He was living in the north uh, of France at the time, in Normandy, in a beautiful 17th century mansion. He hosted us for three days, and he was super happy of hosting us. We were super happy to stay there. I was super happy because most of people are working with me at the distance. You came, so let's create this. By the way, Julien's wife is Russian, so she had the, the possibility to you know, support him in the evaluation of the tea, and we are very happy about this. And then, of course, uh, there's no Russia without the United States in a, in a, in a geographical you know, scenario. Uh, I came here the first time in 1993. I was 20 and my first, uh, I landed in JFK, my first visit was New York. And the first place was Times Square. And then they told me the city is very dangerous, you know, Major Giuliani clean up uh, was happening in those days. Uh, and there still was, uh, you know, a little bit of uh, borderline situation uh, with uh, some prostitution in daylight, uh, the big shows, uh, uh, the food was really junk food. Every time I visit New York, uh, the quality of food is improving. At the time, it was impossible to find a decent pizza, to find decent Italian. And uh, the food courts were, were, were smelling like everything together. There was no way to, you know, and I was—I remember—I was, I remember I was uh, shocked by a few things. Of course, uh, some of some of those I already saw from the movies, like the the, the gas coming from the exhaust, you know, in the streets, like you know. And so it, sometimes you go to New York, it feels like you see, you know, the city in seven. But Trump Tower and the escalator and these businessmen coming down, exiting and grabbing any kind of junk food—that was totally new to me. They say, "Why are you grabbing this food? I mean, you are an elegant." Businessman, you should not do that. You should not, not be allowed to do that. And, and they did. They did. The business women with the tailor, but then they were wearing sneakers. Now sneakers are super popular. Also, the big actually brands are doing this, but at the time, no. And so it was like I, I don't know. I, I was I was uh, feeling like uh, this is the weirdest place uh, I've ever been. Uh, then uh, maybe it's me. Maybe it's the city. The city has improved a lot. Uh, Every year, I think I've been back uh, to New York 25 times now, uh, so I know I know it more or less. Uh, and, but some things never change. The traffic jam, <laughs> and maybe the yellow caps, uh, and it was August, uh, so the old uh, Lincoln's uh, tires were melting on the asphalt. So, as as a young boy, I brought back home. Uh, a, a, a smell memory of a little bit of everything, you know. The prostitute with the very, you know, 1980s, 1990s uh, makeup and lipstick, very glossy, very neon light, uh, and the bacheloretters playing any kind of fragrance of this, uh, you know, commercial time that was very popular in the, in the, in the, in the time, and, and street food uh, and traffic jam. Uh, and believe me, it was not easy to find a nose that was happy to develop this kind of practice. <laughs> because we spoke with a few and say, no, no, come on, why? And then we find, uh, we found uh, Bruno Jovanovic. For some reason, Bruno Jovanovic worked with, uh, um, with, um, 
turn around and smell like, I don't know which kind of flower, but it's a little bit of everything. That was the feeling. Which fragrance did this perfumer create for Frederick Mountain? He made uh, this one Northern and Lucio. Who was it? Bruno Iovanovich. The guy about that is my favorite. It's great, it's great. I like a lot of fruit. I'm made for I'm made for Oh, I had a question for you. You want to know um, the 100 mils? Can we bring 100 mils here? Yes. 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 It dries down a lot, I'm not sure, but that sharpness in the opening is a last way for me. For me, it only lasted a minute or two. It's a lot yeah. Yeah. softer, more blended. After well, after well, the... well, of course, uh, these, uh, as uh, with all fragrances containing naturals, has to be tried on skin. Because uh, there is, for instance, uh, a tarry note, uh, to remember the, uh, the rubber of the tires, uh, which is Styrax. Uh, it's, it's a way to extract from these uh, resin uh, some, some, some fragrant notes uh, that on some skins is not uh, emerging, on some other is very rubbery, very, very rubbery. And, and the rubber may be dominating the floral side. Um, what I like is when it's emerging just a little bit, uh, but changing over time. Like, like you, you, you can smell lots uh, of these rubber notes mingling into the floral side. Uh, and making it, uh, let me say, pleasant and unpleasant uh, from time to time, overall with a positive effort. And, 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 and you know what? There is an accord that is the gourmand side, uh, and we have to decide whether the, the street food was uh, savory or sweet. Eventually, the nose suggested a sweet, because to us uh, Europeans, uh, uh, the most impactful part uh, of this uh, street food uh, uh, heritage of the peanut butter and a lot of other sweet notes. And um, so it created an hazelnut accord, which is extremely like some kind of sweet food. But if I go through it alone, it's too much for me. I, it's, it's, it's weird because I can openly tell you, I cannot bear the accord, but the accord in the formulation, I totally can bear it. So it was a, an effort of balancing. Yeah. <laughs> So the same, the same gentleman did that. Yes. I see where you picked that up from. We got that nut thing. I got a Well, by the way, by the way, it's, uh, that's the way it goes. Why do we pick noses based on what they did? Because after uh, many years of creating fragrances, you develop your own strategies, and each of them had a different strategy. You develop your small set of accords uh, that you're comfortable with, uh, and so on and so forth. So it's uh, absolutely reasonable that you find similar signature mm -hmm. in different fragrances created by the note. But by the way, it was when we started working on this project 10 years ago, it was, it was incredible that most of the brands at the time did not reveal the name of the author. It's like buying a book and not knowing who brought the book. That's why we were determined since day one to write the name of the nose on the top of the bottle. And, and now more and more brands are doing this. Uh, and you can do what you do. So you can go through the different fragrances created by the same nose and say, yeah, yeah, this reminds me of this. This is another line where you know exactly who created what. Uh, and so you can make your own association. I like the style of this guy. I will buy all, all of his books. I like the, the style of this guy. I will buy all of his books. Like music. 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 A lot of 
of single players are, are leaving one band, going to another, bringing the influence, uh, and that, that is exactly the same concept. Mm -hmm. yeah. uh, one more quick question, real quick. I got, I got, I got nothing game, I got to But the, I, I put all the samples. Yeah. I put all the samples, and I said, I'll talk one more week. But the band, you have the ingredients in this game. Yeah. And on some of those ingredients, we had maybe some initials like ABS. Yeah. Uh, what, what is all that about? Like, what is ABS? Okay, for instance, ABS means absolute. Okay, okay. And is as opposed to the essential oil, the most intense distillation of a flower. Uh, you don't only have absolute for flowers, but yeah, typically rose, uh, you might want to know whether it's an essential oil, EO, or an absolute, because it's meant really different. So, so the first thing we decided to add is the type of distillation. There are other acronyms like MD is molecular distillation. What is molecular distillation? Basically, they apply a filter that is a super fine grit that is leaving the fragrant molecule pass and taking the color molecule filter. So you can get a more transparent fragrance through molecular distillation. Another type of distillation you might be interested in, uh, because we have a lot, uh, is the fractional distillation. Okay. Like you start distilling, it goes into, from the Florentine base, into a long uh, high neck cylinder, okay. and depending from where you have the tap, uh, you get a different... Uh, oh, really? You have also? Yes, yes. There are like 10 levels. Right. And you have got 10 small taps, uh, right. and you can take like from number 3 to number 7, right. and typically you live alone, you live outside the, the head and the bottom part, literally head and bottom, because they are like this. This is fractional distillation. For instance, when I write Betty Ver Hart uh, in Hemingway, right. it's a fractional distillation. Why the art? Because at the head, stranger at in my look, you have the earthy part. Okay. You want to have a vetiver that is not as earthy as uh, the regular one, you take a fraction of distillation. Sintugi, that uh, we will show now, is the new, later on, is a new launch, mm -hmm. as a fractional distillation of patchouli. When I first was showing this uh, uh, patchouli raw material to some American frag heads, friends, uh, they were super happy. Because they say, now finally, I can smell one patchouli that doesn't smell like Russo. Like Russo. Doesn't smell like hippie. Because it's clean. Of yeah. course it's clean. Every mod, every every ingredient, natural ingredient, uh, has actually inside many facets. Uh, and you can refine and clean them out. The Lucid Ombre that I will show you next, uh, there's a tuberose uh, that is not in logic at all. It's like water, you're patting. And it's the distillation. The second thing we add is the provenance. Sometimes you see India or the specific yeah, region, Mysore, yeah. or... Yeah, yeah, more Mysore sand would just come yeah. 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 Iris is typically coming from Italy, but you can even have it from France. Rose, the Centifolia is coming from France, but the Damascena is coming from Turkey, or Bulgaria, or other regions. Well, the Vitesse is not the drug, but the Vitesse has, has uh, Iris, Italian, and then there was a, uh, Italian, French, Italian, French, and another Italian, another which is Italian. Right, right. That's why I like that, because it's so buttery. The iron is so buttery. Like, oh, this thing is crazy. The third we thing we add, whenever possible, is the name of the manufacturer. Yeah. It's very important. Uh, this is hard to explain if you are not into creation of raw materials. Mm -hmm. But, like, imagine you... Um, Ye yesterday we met Maurice Bosley, I understood that he's Jamaican, so I imagine, uh, uh, because we ended up speaking about food, now your mother does the best food uh, we can, <laughs> we can yeah. imagine, I, 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 I don't know, but allegedly, it's it very good cool cook and baker, yes. <laughs> very cool uh, so, anyway, thinking about food, uh, it, it came to my mind that in every, single one of the Caribbean islands I visited. Uh, there are special spicy uh, sauce that you can buy. And, and it, everyone has got his own signature. So you just, you just don't add Tobasco to any recipe. You have to know the exact one you might want to buy. 
see what I mean? So when we say, for instance, uh, that the Narcissus uh, of Romanza is as an R, that means Laboratoire Monique Remy. To me, Laboratoire Monique Remy, unless you go to a super, super, super small producer, maybe, maybe making two kilos of fragrance, but if you want good quantity, Alemar is the best. Uh, by in the world uh, for naturals, uh, uh, with four main production sites. One is in Haiti, for the vetiver we use in Haiti in any way. Another one is in the center of France, uh, for Iris, for Narcissus, and so on. So that's why we add things. Uh, of course, we have to be short, uh, so we use a lot of acronym, but feel free to ask. Uh, we are pleased to say, because the more we say, we are not afraid that people will steal the phone anymore. The more, the more we say, the more we give information to customers, uh, and it's more, you know, better transparency of what we do and how we do it. Yes, we do. We don't have a dancing, dancing uh, area. Yes. What, what is it about <laughs> the area that you really like? Because I, I like her too as a nose. Yes, yes, we did the Rade Monte Cristo, the first two that I yes. used, uh, and she is lovely. Yeah, she is besides, the, besides the fact that from the you know, human aspect point of view, each and every one of the noses we're working with uh, are so sensible. Probably it's because of the job they do. Uh, and it's like being an artist, so uh, there's a lot of connection, there's a lot of empathy. But, you know, she love their job and she loves their place, uh, she loves to have us there, with her. Now we are creating a new fragrance with her. Uh, that's another long story, but we want to pick uh, the best uh, female performers we have been working with. Uh, because this industry, uh, it could be surprising, but most of the noses are actually men. For right, some right. reasons, uh, you can get a proportion 50-50. Right. Uh, we are not obsessed with that, but we we'll try to you know, keep the proportion. Yeah, and, and when we noticed that we started having good progresses with a few uh, female noses, we say we want to create a new line, which we will be introducing next year, where we, where the noses are just women. We, we, we call that Le Donne di Mas, the women of Masca. Why are you smiling? You have about this, yeah? Okay. But they are still yeah. unisex. Right? They will be feminine. They will be feminine. Yeah, that, that's new because uh, my also my philosophy on this is this has no sense. Well, right, of course. We don't create a painting or piece of music thinking men, women, come on. Okay. Uh, so we never had the attitude. But here we want to make a sort of homage to women. So in that case, we are picking the five noses, and the first one was Delphi, creating, giving them an opportunity to create a line, and do a line that is prominently floral, and you know, feminine notes. Then, of course, that also will be unisex. But you know what? A lot of people would see the old 100 ml that we had, the Sanitico bottle, and say, it is for men, why? Oh, the shape. There are a lot of cliché. If you go to Sephora, if you go to Mariano, you see all the men like blue, black, pink, very soft colors here. Uh, the shapes are completely different. They change the shape because they want to convey. This is has been coded by marketing. We don't want to, you know, to fall into this cliché. Uh, why, why couldn't have? woman like the blue color, the black color, dark color, etc. But that line will be light, lighter in color, will have white and light gold, but that's another story. Let me go to the second yeah, 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 yeah. Let me meet you. Put your blue paper. Yeah. <laughs> okay, gotcha. Here you go, I wish I could stay. I got some of the Okay, I'll get a sample of the rose for you. Thanks.